Hello and welcome back. If this is the first time you've joined us, my name is Keith Thompson. I'm with the Armadale Church of Christ. We're continuing to study in our topic of things that are difficult to understand. And this is part two of a series that we're doing on forgiveness. We noticed in our previous video, and, and I'll try to put the, the link up here in the corner, that we need to forgive because we have been forgiven by God. We cannot be saved unless we're forgiven. And we're going to continue to look on that and how all that happens. Because we need to recognize, first of all, that we have sinned. In Romans 3, in verse 23, we read, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. There's not one man or woman living who has not sinned. We are all guilty and we need the forgiveness of sins because we've fallen short of the glory of God. In Romans 6.23, it says, The wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus. Now this is what God said right at the beginning in the garden. When he told Adam and Eve not to eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, he said, for the day that you eat of it, you shall surely die. Well, it's the same here in Romans 6.23. The wages of sin is death. We can understand that. All of us have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And what we earn from that, the wages of sin, well, that's death. And death means separation. When, when we die physically... Our spirit leaves our body. When we die spiritually, we're separated from God. The wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus. How do we receive this gift that God is offering us? Well, to understand that, we've got to go to the very first gospel sermon. It's found in Acts chapter 2. The Apostle Peter is teaching there. He's been teaching the, the gathered Jews that they had crucified Jesus who was the Christ. Notice we're going to pick it up in verse 37 and read verse 38. Now when they heard this they were pierced to the heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, brethren what shall we do? And Peter said to them, the Repent, and let each of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. You see, the gathered Jews had realized that they had sinned in such a terrible way. They had murdered the Messiah. What must we do? Well, they believed in the teaching of the, the Apostle Peter. What was left for them to do? Well, first... He said, you've got to repent. Now, repentance is a change of heart that leads to a change of life. These Jews were going down the path that was against Jesus. And Peter says, you've got to turn around. And then he says, you've got to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. Baptism is always immersion in water. A lot of people get confused about this, but every time baptism is mentioned, it's talking about immersion in water. John was baptizing uh, in the Jordan near Anion because there was much water there. So that's the first thing. We're going to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. That means by his authority, we have to have his baptism and his where we get to this idea of forgiveness. Baptism in the name of Jesus Christ is for the forgiveness of sins. That's how we have our sins forgiven. That's how we have forgiveness. And so, a sinner, and we all have been sinners, who is lost without Christ, the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus. The way we receive that gift is believing in Jesus, repenting of our sins, and being baptized 
in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of sins. Now, the Apostle Paul gives us a, an interesting insight into what this repentance is. Notice what we read in uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 7 and verse 10. For the sorrow that is according to the will of God produces a repentance without regret, leading to salvation. But the sorrow of the world produces death. You know, it's very interesting. On the night that Jesus uh, was betrayed, uh, Judas Iscariot went to the, the, the high priests and he sold Jesus for 30 pieces of silver. Now, when he realized what was going to happen, he was sorry about that and he threw the money back into the treasury. But then he went out and hung himself committed suicide. You see, he was sorry, but this was not a change of heart that led to, to a change of life. There was another apostle that denied Jesus three times. The apostle Peter, while Jesus was on trial, just as Jesus has said before the cock crowed, Peter denied him three times. When he realized what he had done, he went away and wept bitterly. But the next time we read of Peter, he hasn't given up. We see a changed man, a man of faith, waiting with the disciples for the risen Lord. This is what it's talking about. Sorrow that is according to the will of God re produces repentance without regret. That's the repentance that we need to have. Now just quickly, in the final verse, we're going to look at what we do as Christians. Because when we're baptized for the forgiveness of sins, that doesn't mean that we're suddenly perfect and we don't stumble and fall, that we don't fall into sin. What does a Christian do to be forgiven after they've sinned again, after they've stumbled, after they've fallen. Well, we can't go beyond what the Bible teaches. We can't add to what the Bible teaches. There was a man named Simon uh, in the city of Samaria. We read about him in Acts chapter 8. And he previously had been fooling the people and they called him the power of God. But when they saw the miracles of God and heard the preaching, when he saw the miracles of God and the preaching, of, uh, of Philip, he believed and he was baptized. Well, unfortunately, he fell back into his evil ways and he fell into sin once again. What did he have to do? Was he told, well, you've got to be baptized again? No. He was, he, a Christian doesn't have to be baptized again. Notice Acts chapter 8, uh, verse 20 to 22. But Peter said to him, May your silver perish with you because you thought you could obtain the gift of God with money. You have no part or portion in this matter for your heart is not right before God. Now verse 22. Therefore repent of this wickedness and pray the Lord that if possible the intentions of your heart may be forgiven you. That is how a Christian receives forgiveness if they have wandered off of the straight and narrow path, if they have wandered into sin, they have to repent and then pray to God. And that's how we get forgiveness. We don't have to wait for a, a gathering of the church. We don't have to, to, to confess all our sins to a priest or any other person. No. We've ha got to have sorrow that is according to the will of God, and that will lead to repentance, which is a change of life. That's what repentance is, a change of life, and then we have to pray to God for forgiveness. What a wonderful gift we have, the forgiveness of God. It took the death of Jesus Christ to give us salvation. But we can only receive that initially by 
believing, repenting, and being baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of sins. And then, as a Christian, throughout our lives, we're going to make mistakes. Don't get me wrong, we all make mistakes. But we don't have to do a great penance. What we have to do is change the path that we're walking on, repent, and pray to God for forgiveness. My friends, if you'd like more information about this, why don't you contact us? You can reach us in the comment section below. If you've enjoyed this video, click the like button. If you haven't uh, subscribed, why don't you subscribe? We gather together, we meet together <laughs> every week where we publish these videos. So thank you, and we hope to see you next time. Goodbye.